Recording is in progress. Hello, gamers. It is Cuddlepunk once again, aka Hot Topic Harlow. We are back with another brand new interview. And oh, baby, do we have a guest today? You know him as a multi instrumentalist that will fill in whenever your faves need a hand. You know him as a fantastic musical artist in his own right. You know him as an absolute remix god. To know him is to know a genius. To hear his work is to hear a renaissance man in his own time. Tommy Kessler is on Cuddlepunk today. Tommy, how you doing? That was the nicest introduction I've ever gotten in my life. Holy I shit. I try to give everybody the biggest rock star interview that I possibly can when they come on. Beautiful. Thank you. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I see that you've got the cocktail right there. That's the Cuddle Punk cocktail. For those who don't know, Tommy loves making custom cocktails. What's that one made? Yeah, so this is Reposado Tequila, Mezcal, Fernet, Lime Juice, and Strawberry Syrup. We do love tequila over here at Cuddle Punk. We're going to get right into it. So I know that you grew up in St. Louis. Um, so tell me about the scene there and your part in it. <laughs> um, so it's funny. I haven't been there since high school or lived there since high school. So when I was involved in the scene, I was like 16, 17 years old and younger than that, being in bands from middle school through high school and didn't feel super connected to it because I was so much younger than everybody else. So I wish I had a better sense for what the St. Louis scene was like but I was just too young to really have a gauge for that sort of thing. I was just playing the shows I could get at that point. If I'm honest with you, that's basically what it was for me in the Massachusetts scene, except I wasn't even playing. I didn't even know that the shows were around because they were all in like the middle of nowhere. Yeah, well, even St. Louis where it's less middle of nowhere-y, I didn't know what was going on ever. I just find a gig, do it, and then leave and didn't really make much of an effort to connect with people, which I think was the mistake. I get you. So if that's the case, what brought you to Chicago? Job. Job? It's a good a job I like a lot. Gotcha. Um, I in marketing as a writer, so it's it's really fun and I enjoy it a lot. We do marketing for nonprofits, which um, makes it extra special. So, how did you get involved in the scene then? Uh, through Logan Greenfield, drummer of for. Of course, Pink it's through Logan. Drummer in the Tommy Kessler Live Experience. They are one of my favorite people in the whole world. Um, they had a job in St. Louis after I left for college, but we had a lot of mutual friends because I used to work at the same place, so there was overlap. Um, and then they moved to Chicago, and we got drinks and hit it off and uh, have been really good friends. They introduced me to the rest of Pink Squeeze, and it just kind of grew from there. Just, you know, those four lovely people take me under their wing and um, making a point, an intentional point of just introducing me to their friends, and I'm really thankful for it. Pink Squeeze have done more for me personally than I will be getting to in this interview, but there's another video coming up that is really going to show just how much they've meant to me there. The I watched four of the nice, they're earlier. four of the nicest people in the world. I love every no. single one of them. They're the best. And I'm so lucky they let me share their rhythm section because they're so good. The rhythm section is lucky to be playing with you, 100%. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you. So obviously you've been making your own music for a certain amount of time. Mostly what I know you from before this interview is as a producer. How long have you been producing for other people? For other people, not very long. A lot of my um, production credit is through the remix stuff, remixing other people's songs. Prior to that, I've been producing my own stuff since like middle school, but it wasn't good until debatably ever, but maybe it's better now. Um, so yeah, a lot of like the other people's stuff, is just them sending me stems and me doing production that way through remixes. Going to your music in that case, you have such a unique sound in this scene. Like, Everybody, it's a very punky scene, and there's a lot of indie rock mixed into it, but you have this, like, much more indie, much more, like, R&B influence, almost like Destroyer-type stuff. What influences do you pull from to bring all that stuff forward? Yeah, the two main things... Well, I've been listening to classic rock since I was born. Uh, my parents raised me on the Beatles, and they're still my favorite band to this day. Um, and have been since I was, like, three and aware of them. So Beatles are big. And then just the whole classic rock thing. My dad was into metal in the 80s, so I listened to a lot of hair metal growing up. So that was Hell big. Yeah. Which I don't know if that comes through, but I hope it does. And then more recently, I got into rap music in college. And I think the combination of classic rock and contemporary rap are kind of the two main buckets that are informing what I'm doing. You can definitely hear the hip-hop influences when it comes to the different beats and like the 808s and everything like that. Yeah, and I think just from a production standpoint, I'm thinking of it not that I'm like a rap producer by any means, but I think if you're looking at it, rock production versus rap production, I have more in common with rap producers in terms of how I approach it. Production kind of as a more um, from the ground up thing, I guess. 
Because with hip hop production, yeah, I would say that it is much more like they're the ones making the songs as much as they are like helping the project come through. Yeah, and I want to do both. And I've got some stuff I don't know if I can talk about lined up to where I might be producing other people, which is exciting in a very different context and more of an indie context. But we'll see how that pans out because it's, it's new. I've heard some of the stuff that you've produced. Somebody showed me some of that stuff and I'm very, very excited for what's coming. I don't know if I can talk about it because I know there isn't- I, I know which one you're talking you about. You know which one I'm talking about. The song isn't out yet, but ooh, baby, when this shit hits, oh my God, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a very good time when that song hits. You talked already about your connection with Pink Squeeze. You play in a lot, a lot of the bands that are in this scene. How many bands in this scene have you played with? So I got my solo stuff. Okay, cool. I'm their guitarist now, which is exciting. I played with Calico Loco for the MCR thing. I have another show with them in December because Zeke's going to be out of town. And then there's another one coming in December that I also think is supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> That's as much as I can say there, but there's a show in December everyone should be at um, and you'll figure it out. Come to Cuddle Punk for all of your distracting teases, everybody. This, this is always. I just never. I'm really bad at keeping secrets because I just want to tell everyone everything. Oh, no, I like, am too. It's the exact same it. thing. I'm crazy. Anytime that I have an idea for anything, I want to share it with everybody, and then it ruins the surprise entirely. So I'm trying my best because I, I love surprises, but I'm so bad at explaining them for other people. I get you. You are a very prolific remix artist. What made you want to start working with other people's songs? Yeah, I mean, the first thing was boredom. I was just really bored this summer. So I put a thing on Instagram and I was just like, if anyone wants me to do a remix, um, I'm kind of new to it, but I'd love to just like see how other people record through their stems and then mess with it on my own and see what I could do. And I did that a little bit in college, finding illegal stems of pop songs. It's actually how I got kicked off of Facebook was for making illegal remixes. Oh, shit. If you're trying to find me on Facebook, I'm permanently banned for copyright infringement. Um, so it was like pop songs and stuff. So nothing was at stake. It's so much different now when it's like my friends and bands that I like and I already love the songs. Um, there's like this moment of anxiety every time I send the remix to somebody where I'm just like, oh, they're going to fucking hate this. And it hasn't happened yet. Um, but a lot of it was just, I did a couple. Logan was like, you should make a compilation of the remixes you're doing. And I was like, that'd be cool. I probably need to do more. So then I started reaching out to people just like, hey, I like your band and made some friends that way. Um, and now I have a 13 song compilation. Yeah, Almost that tape's done. coming out in December, right? December 2nd on Bandcamp Friday. I'm excited for people to hear it and all the money from that because it's Bandcamp Friday. So there's no fees. Bandcamp takes off the top. All that money's going to Brave Space Alliance, uh, which is a charity. Oh, hell alliance. yes. I love Brave Space Alliance. I donate yeah. to them all the time. Yep. So all, all the money's going toward them, which will be cool. And I'm trying to get a release thing set up, but I've not had luck yet. But there might be a party. I'm very excited for that party. For those who don't know, Brave Space Alliance is the only uh, LGBTQ community center on the south side of Chicago. It's a very, very worthy cause. It's awesome that that's where the money's going. Hold, oh, I didn't even know that. Oh, my God. I'm really excited now. That's one of the most exciting. I mean, obviously, just like doing it was so fun, but uh, I'm really excited for that to see where that goes. So absolutely. Uh, what's the name of that tape again? The Wiener Tape. The Wiener Tape, absolutely. Is that just yeah, a Chicago is that mostly a Chicago thing, or is it yeah. like hundred percent a Chicago thing? I live across the street from the Wiener Circle, so I think I was just walking past it one day, and I was like, "That'd be a that'd be a good name." These people, let me tell you, Tommy, I don't even eat the hot dog most of the time. I have to get the hot dog for other people. The second, the very second that they see me putting ketchup on the hot dog it's like a it's like an alarm that's gone off i mean luckily i like the chicago dogs and get it every time and i feel like i'm on good terms with the workers there that i do recognize just like on a face basis um i love wiener circle so much wiener circle's they're so awesome mean. they're they so mean to me. i love it so as you find yourself to be and this is going to be partially like this is going to be somewhat of a i don't know if it's mean but it's more personal than i've ever gotten with a question as you find yourself to be more and more because i would call you an incredibly in integral member of the scene at this point like i there's a ton of people who know that they can reach out to you and you're going to make something great for them do you ever worry about burnout Ooh, um 
I mean, I think if it everyone... starts now, I apologize. <laughs> this is the catalyst for me getting anxious for the rest of my life. I've caused his decline. I've caused the existential crisis of Tommy Kessler. <laughs> this is the exact moment it hits. No, I don't think so. I mean, the good news is it's so damn fun to like it. It is my what I do in my free time. Like it does. It never feels like work. Um, and maybe that'll change if at some point in my life it does become work. But at this point, it's just something I do for fun. I mean, this this year I've done two shows where I had less than a week's notice to learn like nine songs, and it was fun. Like I love the challenge. I love being challenged, and I think because that's kind of my impetus for doing things, um, I, I don't burn out as much. I see challenge as an energizing thing. I think that you are doing an incredible job, especially with the remix stuff. I will say that, and I love this song. Your version of "Liquor Song" by Damager is one hundred percent my favorite version of the song. Oh jeez. I mean, so what I will say, people make comparisons sometimes with the remixes versus the originals. None of the songs I'm remixing are songs I didn't already love to death in the first place. Oh, of course. Um, so that's the nice thing. So what's nice about it is it, like there's at no point has there ever been like, how can I improve this? It's always just how can I reinterpret it? And I think that's important for people to keep in mind. But the Damager one I'm really proud of. And that was like the second one I did. Dan was really generous to let me do that early before I had proven myself in this field. Dan's the best. Dan's the best. So you have had a very prolific year, not just with the remixes. You've also put out both an album and a series of EPs. What went into deciding to do the Mortal Love thing as a series of EPs and then to have Thanks for Your Patience be a full album? Yeah, I think part of it was having released Thanks for Your Patience. And that was before I'd even played a show in Chicago. So I was just releasing it to release it. I didn't know anybody really. Um, but I put it out, felt like it was way too long and had a conversation with Danny from Calico Loco. Um, and they were just talking about how people have short attention spans. And I was like, yeah, I have a short attention span. I wouldn't listen to my own album if it came out and was 50 minutes long. <laughs> um, so I was just thinking of ways I could experiment with the format and just have it be more digestible. Um, and it was nine songs. I knew it was going to be nine songs, if it was an album or an EP. Um, and I was like, well, 333 three, three seems like an even split. So I messed with the track list, tried to get them to be three separate things that still cohered in a meaningful way. Um, and yeah, I, I think it was fine. I mean, hopefully people didn't get sick of it by the third one, but I'm proud of how it turned out. And I think having to be three distinct things was good and a challenge for me to start breaking things up in ways I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, As someone who mainlined them, this week to prepare for this interview i think it worked amazingly well i think it i think they all all three of them do work as their own individual little pieces that also work really well together as a whole thank you yeah i definitely had like one of them's the weird one and one's the existential one and one's the sad one you can figure out which is which but in my head it was definitely like all right this is all the mortal love but at the same time how can i yeah have it feel like their own three things and i i hope that worked so thank you for saying that of course. Who did your artwork for the Mortal Love series as well? Those are, that's just brilliant artwork. Yeah, that was a painting my uncle did. Uh, oh, wow. I don't know how long ago he painted it, but it's been hanging in my apartment for years. Um, and I just was looking at it and I'm like, this would be, he passed away when I was young. So I was like, this would be a cool tribute to like use it for something. Um, and this felt like the right project just thematically um, thinking about mortality and stuff like that. His death affected me as a kid so um I, I think it worked for what i was feeling while making the project just kind of having him be a part of it was really special i cannot imagine something more diy than using your past uncle's painting as your album cover that is both mm -hmm. physically and metaphorically the most diy thing i've ever heard oh yeah i appreciate that's, it that's incredible so so you've integrated yourself pretty well into the scene you would say tommy yeah i have a lot of really good friends i did in a year ago and that's wild to me all right so we're going to test those friendships so what yes. i've done is i have collected 10 songs and each one of them is by a different scene artist in chicago wow. okay. and you have to guess what those bands are based on just the songs okay all right you ready i think i hope so all right number one who wrote Mother? Pink Squeeze. There we go. Pink Squeeze. You're off to a good start. Stargazers. 
No more marks? That was Calico Loco. Oh, is that an older one? It's an older one. I did pick from some older ones. I will say that. I wanted to make it a little bit more of a challenge for Calico Loco specifically because you've played with them. Yeah, we haven't. I haven't practiced that one with them. Damn. I gotcha. <laughs> Freemasons. You you pick the word. I'm so bad with song titles. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep guessing Nora Marks on all of these. But I know there, it's not. There is a Nora Marks one in there, Tommy. I'll be honest with you. I chose this specifically just because I thought it would be really funny for everybody to see this. I'll be completely honest with you. I, this is a mostly for this. Is, this video is for the scene, man. Yeah, damn. Okay, cool. <laughs> I can get on board with that. I like it. All right. Uh, what's your guess for Freemasons? I don't fuck if I know. That one's totally cashed. Was see, it's all these early ones. So many of these bands, I've like listened to the new stuff. Okay, I get you. You're doing, you're doing great. <laughs> I appreciate that my plan's working, although I do apologize for unwillingly putting you through it. No, this is fine. I'm just gonna lose a bunch of friends. I'm into it. All right, awesome. Um, Man Ray. Fuck. This one is not technically Chicago, but I do think they fit into the scene. That makes me think Diet Light. It is Diet Light. I gave it away too quickly. <laughs> All right. Deer Spit. Deer Spit. Stumped. That one's Nora Marks. The one I was going to do is the bit. God. <laughs> Gosh darn. You got to pick a new bit now, man. got to pick a new bit. I was... Okay. I'm going to get one of these. I got one All right. of them. Two of them. We're good. You got, two of, you got two of them. I think you got... Yeah, you got two of them. Um, surf and turf. Surf and turf. Fundamental kink. I haven't met them yet. I also have not met them yet. I was going to go to the um hummingbird show on Saturday, and then I got way too tired. Yeah, I was out of town. I was at a wedding. Um, gotcha. I did want to go to that. Yeah. I don't know them. So that one I feel like I'm justified. I think so. I think we'll count that one off. It's now you're at now two out of nine, I think. Okay, I'm ready. All right. Keep going. Thrilled slash stoked. Is that damager? It is damager. One third we've got. All right. We're into the last three. Him. Hyper vigilant. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. There we go. Yep, I knew you were going to get it. I know okay, how to, cool. play, I know how to play that one. So you I know how to play that one. All right. <laughs> okay, cool are genuine. Like, it is kind of unfair, but I do think that the fact that Fantano knows that they exist is the coolest thing in the world. I was not aware of that. Yeah, Fantano reacted to Okay, Cool. Um, I think it was, like, still during lockdown. Uh, they reacted to, uh, he reacted to Okay, Cool during New Music Friday. That's cool. Yeah, it's super sick. Aw. Love that. Don't phase me. Don't phase me. I don't know. That is Cut Your Losses. That one's technically a trick because that was from when they were Skylight Cinema. Ha, sneak. I mean, I still should have known that, but that was sneaky. That's good. All right, the last one. Project 21. Shit. Um... I don't got it. It's super kick. Oh. It's super kick. You know what? You got one third right. And honestly, you proved that you are not, that you know at least a few of the bands that you're friends with. And I got my joke out of it. So, you know what? I think we're square here, Tommy. Okay. I feel better about that. All right. Um, yeah. When, when you say one third, it feels better than me giggling my way through not knowing them. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to assist. Tommy, it has been so great talking to you. Where can people find you? People can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Tommy Kess. I'm on Spotify. I'm on Bandcamp. Um, Wiener Tapes coming December 2nd on that Bandcamp. And yeah, I'm really excited for that and hope people like it. I'm so excited for that tape. Now that I know that it's going to Brave Space Alliance, I'm even more excited for that tape. That it, Again, it's such a good cause. I'm going to leave a link to both the to the, both the Wiener tape and as well as Brave Space Alliance themselves. I'm going to leave links to both of them in the description of this video. Tommy, thank you so much for being here, man. This has been great. Thanks for having me. Yeah.